Morning, everybody. I just woke up. I was checking my emails, and um, Kenny had sent me an email about a mock city um, in San Diego, and you know what are they using this for? So we had to connect some dots, and I'm going to show you maybe what I think they use crisis actors there too. Um, I'll read you that story. This. I'm not going to make this long. I'm, I'm going to try to make this short. But let me show you first what I found out. What's happening in California as of April 13th, 2013. Hold on. Yes, it's my first cup of coffee, so bear with me. California, when the gun complications starts, don't let them in the door. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to read this really briefly. California inched closer to passing a gun confiscation bill last week. The, the bill returns to the Senate for some non-controversial amendments and then goes to the desk of Governor Brown. What the people of California need to realize is this is all a formality. The gun confiscation is already happening and will continue. This legislation would only provide more money to expedite the process. <clears throat> With all the major news, this legislation has been largely unnoticed in the media. What I want all of our readers to understand is this is happening in California and will continue to happen. It's only happening because the people do not know and understand their rights. And, and before I go any further, I'm going to have to tell you, I see Mark Dice out there, you know, kind of promoting, <clears throat> wouldn't it be a good idea to have your gun rights taken away? Would you sign this petition? Um, I don't know if he has like a cognitive dissonance disorder, but for some reason at this point, I'm nothing personal against Mark, but you need to stop doing that because you're confusing people. Maybe you need to teach them what their rights are. Okay, I'll continue the story now. <clears throat> the thing you must understand is that the bill deals with a type of gun confiscation that happens without warrants. Let me quote a Huffington Post article which appeared last week. California is the only U.S. city where law enforcement officials confiscate guns from the homes of individuals not legally permitted to own them because gun confiscation agents do not obtain search warrants. Their job involves convincing people to let them into their homes and hand over their guns. If an individual does not turn over a gun, he or she can be arrested on suspicion of Suspicion of illegally owning firearms. Really? Is this one of the craziest things you've ever heard in your life? This paragraph shocked me. Your Fourth Amendment protects you from unreasonable search and seizure. Here's the text of the Fourth Amendment. The right of the people to be secure in their, position, their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath of affirmment and partially describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. We don't even talk about the Second Amendment and, and shall not be infringed to understand what the Fourth Amendment is, is, is also in play here. If they don't produce a warrant, you are not required to let them in your door, period. If you decide to let them in and you decide to hand over a gun, to them, then you may be giving up your own protection under the Fifth Amendment. No person shall be held to answer for a capital otherwise infamous crime unless on a, a presentment or indication of a grand jury, except in the case arising in the land or naval forces of the militia when the actual service in time of war or public danger nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Boy, that one needs to be put on a lot of things. Um, I added emphasis to the key parts of the Fifth Amendment text that I want you to look at. I am not a constitutional attorney, so you will get a layman's explanation here. 
If you let these gun grabbers in your home and give them what they are asking for, then you've given up your right to due process, in my opinion. They have not produced a warrant, and that has been signed by a judge, and have, you have given them what they wanted in spite of that. Also, in a way, you have just been forced to witness against yourself. In a situation where different... Were, if the situation were different, I would bring that up. But according to the Huffington Post, if you comply, then you might be arrested. How's that for justice? You accommodate the officers that come to your door. You hand over what they ask for. Then they might arrest you for being cooperative. So what do you do when one of these gun grabbers show up at your door? Tell them to wait outside while you call your attorney. Or tell them to come back when they can produce a warrant. And I'm going to leave this this for you. It, it, it goes on and on. I'm going to leave this link. So in California, while all these other distractions are going on, it just needs this just needs a few little you know, the I's dotted and the T's crossed, and then this brown guy is going to uh, go ahead and sign this in. Which brings me to this. This is a city. Now look at this. $170 million mock city arises um, at Marine Base right outside of San Diego. And this is an older article. A mock city roughly the size of downtown San Diego has risen in the remote southern California desert to train military forces to fight in urban environments. The $170 million of our tax dollars <laughs> urban training center was unveiled Tuesday, and this is in 2011, mind you so. At the 29 Palms Military Base, 170 miles nor northeast of San Diego. Now, now that I bring up San Diego, this San Diego has the lar largest deep water port, I think, on the Pacific Ocean. And it is leased to the Chinese. So, um, it's not our port. Clinton gave it to the Chinese. This 1,560 building facility will allow troops to practice refined skills that can be used around the world. The Marine Corps says the military has been operating a slew of mock Afghan villages at the bases across the country to prepare troops for battle before they are deployed. The new training center is one of the largest and most elaborate. Seven separate mock city districts spread over 274 acres of desert. The fake markets, hotels, and other businesses are complete with actors who create scenarios, mm, sounds like crisis actors, that pose a full range of challenges from humanitarian relief efforts to peacekeeping to police work and direct combat, according to the Marine Corps. More than 15,000 Marines sailors can, uh, and sailors can train simultane simultaneously in this massive simulator to experience the difficulties they will face during deployment as they they communicate, coordinate, maneuver, and operate in such settings, according to the Marine Corps. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this for you uh, to finish reading. I'm just going to say this. you got a mock city right there in California, and you've got these guys all trained to do combat. Also, these crisis actors, it sounds like. Um, and they're going to take your guns away there. They're going to go door to door. So, California, you need a heads up here. Be safe. Don't let them in your door. Say, I'm going to call my attorney, or do you have a warrant? And if they start breaking down doors, you have a camera ready, hooked up to YouTube or, or something. Call a friend who can grab a camera and at least record your voice over what's happening. Anyway, this is Linda, and I'm out. Peace. Everybody have a nice day. I'm going to drink my cup of coffee now.